Scoreline is 2-0 in favor of Alpha X. In the bottom right, from the aforementioned team, it's Estrella. And spotting in the top right, in the red, it's the Terran. It is Yun from Shopify Rebellion. No early probe. That does mean we're not going to see any immediate cheese coming out from Estrella, but he is actually not walling off the high ground. Um, on this map, there is a little Reaper jump up point right below, um, right by that third base, actually. And so, you know, some Protoss, you will see them uh, try and wall that off, but Estrella just going for the gateway right by his Nexus. So it does seem like this will be fairly conservative from both of the players just to start. Yeah, definitely. Now, I gotta be honest, the first time I ever heard of Shopify Rebellion, I thought it was uh, Spotify Rebellion. And I was like, oh, that's cool, Spotify's <laughs> getting into StarCraft. And I was like, oh no, it's Shopify. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. So, um, looks oh, like we I'll will get that. into a, a natural here for Astray. And again, it, it's kind of interesting. A lot of times we get into the habit of seeing Protoss send across the probe, uh, try to delay the barracks, try to delay, like, the expansion and just be annoying as all possible and Estrella's kind of taking a, a late back response he's checking for proxies right now but he's not trying to be aggressive with a probe or anything he's just building up his gateways he's you know finally going to get a zealot and we may actually see some pressure coming in here sending a zealot mm -hmm. across the map and then eventually going into maybe like a stalker or a depth behind it yeah, so just a little bit of aggression here from Estrella. It's nothing where, like, he has a second gate that's also uh, across the map. And you see Bion here. Um, this is something that he likes to do a lot in uh, TVP, actually, where he just does not actually go for the Reaper at all. <laughs> I don't think Bion even worker scouts. He just says, you know what? I'm going to build a Marine, and I will be fine. Um, <laughs> it's very ballsy, but he does it a lot. And you know what? It's It works out for him most of the time, so can't knock it that, <laughs> that much. Uh, but... It, you know, of course, it is very, very easy to punish if a Protoss does indeed go for that proxy, because usually there would be, you know, a Zell across the map and you have one Marine. Yeah, he is being safe by putting the, the CC on the top. It delays it a little bit because you have to fly it over, land it and all of that. But it will allow him to at least get the expansion up. So there's not going to be a worry of it getting denied or, or shut down due to early aggression. And he also has now that second supply depot. So... Units aren't going to be able to just walk on in unless he has them the doors down. And it looks like he is going to be transitioning into basically a Widowmine drop. And with Estrella opening up double sentry and then a stalker, that might end up working out for him. But Estrella will be able to at least get a couple of, you know, fake Templar or just uh, hallucinated Phoenix and uh, be able to eventually kind of scout and see what's going on. Yeah, the Widowmine drop won't go uh, un unbeknownst to Estrella. <laughs> he's yeah. he's going to have, uh, as you say, the Elucidated Phoenix sees that there's a Widowmine already positioned, sees the second one building, and that should be enough information alone for a Protoss player at this level to just be like, oh, okay, you're going to be going into uh, a Widowmine drop. And you see Estrella actually uh, immediately building an Immortal, and usually you don't see players actually just get the Immortal because its DPS is not really that important enough with the early units that they... Uh, Terran end up building to to get. Usually you'll just see players instead try and tech up a bit more, get into their Robo Facility or their Robo Bay, and then go into Disruptors or Colossus. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, is like Temp or excuse me, uh, Immortals are pretty good against, you know, tanks. And on a map like Beckett Industries, we talked about how that ramp down at the bottom that a lot of... Uh, like Reapers and stuff like to use, that's also a good siege up point or a blink up point for Protoss. So maybe just having that to, you know, take care of any kind of, of tank that may try to siege up there. But it looks like with the Widow Mines coming in, gonna get one kill. And he still has two left. Uh, there we go. Oh! Oh, Estrella pulls back, but three workers still go down. Eh. Decent damage as five workers do end up falling, but not as much as you would like as actually Australia is actually just going to be able to push here with the Immortal. Does get a sentry immediately picked off in the bunker with the repair should be enough to hold on. And especially once that tank pops, not really going to be a chance of this getting any damage done. But behind it, you have Australia, of course, putting down that third base and getting ready, uh, getting ready to, to transition to whatever tech he chooses off of this. Definitely. Well, 
I, I like that kind of play. We, we a lot of times see, you know, Protoss is just trying to essentially keep the Terran at home if they can keep him there and not just out on the map flying around, and especially on a map like Beckett Industries where there's a lot of airspace to the side of the base. Um, it puts it in this interesting perspective of then I can kind of tech up on my own side. We see him going and transitioning into that robotics bay, which will allow him to go into Colossus if he wants to, but more than likely we're going to start seeing that disruptor play coming out from him. Yeah, especially against a player who is uh, so good with your with their bio. Just disruptors can be a great tool to force the splits out, to just be able to get favorable trades, and if Bion isn't paying attention, you know, of course, kill off a majority of that army. But yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting to see how Estrella does end up winning this, but we'll decide to go for the Colossus. Sign that is, I think on this map is a good choice. Again, there's a lot of cliffs uh, that the Colossus can use to hop up and down from. So I do like them, but of course you're probably only gonna see three or so mm -hmm. before eventually getting the disruptors up as beyond with little Raven gonna be doing a bit of harassment, nothing too, too serious, just gets two workers. And really this is just, I mean, as stocks standard of a game as you get where the Protoss Defends the early harass, takes a little bit of damage, but it's nothing that they can't manage. Mm -hmm. And then they try and keep the Terran from comfortably taking a third for as long as possible. Definitely. We do see that third base on the way as we speak. It's got stim and combat shields on the way, finally getting that plus one. And, you know, with charge coming through and plus one now for Astraea, uh Okay, I was like, what is he doing there by himself? You know, it gets kind of an interesting. We talk about these choke points and just seeing... How these engagements are going to have to help, you know, kind of go through. So we got tanks coming down, got the uh, charge and everything coming through, and it almost feels like Astraea not necessarily is like afraid to to attack, but just wants to be cautious of this. And now, Bion going to start coming across the map and, and trying to do a little bit of a push or just pick off oh. some of these stray units. Very nice to get whatever free damage you can, Astraea. They're not taking any losses. Get some marines. Get some marauder. And of course, behind this is being left alone. Now uh, hasn't had to deal with any harass past that one raven that just came in and popped down a turret. And so, you know, as you said, allowing allowing him to get into that charge, into that plus one, place down the extra gateways. And this just means that Estrella will be in a comfortable position to hold the push that eventually comes out. Bion did get the stim, did, I believe, get the plus one, plus one, if I'm not wrong. Um, and now his combat shields finished as well. So. This is the push for the Terran. Three tanks, a Raven, and lots of bio. It's a very potent force. And of course, we'll have those interference matrices for the Colossus, but you just have to find the right angle. You really can't afford to fight out in the open on this map. Yeah, definitely. We got combat shields on the way. He's only got plus one of the weapons upgrade because Terran's just making one uh, eBay against Protoss. It's the lockdown on one of the Colossus, but by this, the time this attack actually oh. is able to come across, the, the lockdown's going to be gone, and it's going to be kind of for naught, but this Colossus taking a lot of damage to start things off with, and it's just a slow push with the tanks, and, and really being careful not to overextend. We see the transition into some Vikings to kind of help deal with those Colossus as well, and Extended Thermal Lance just now going to be finishing up, which will give a little bit more power to a stray to be able to attack into this very heavy, like, marine army, but he still has to be careful. I... I don't know if I like this. Estrella trying to get on top of the Marines and the Marauders, but oh, Colossus already go down there. The tank in a wonderful position there across the dead airspace. And Estrella still has a lot of minerals in the bank, has a lot of gateways available, just needs to get those up, needs to start warping in units. Because Beyond is still going to start rallying across the map, those tanks. Yeah. We're, I mean, deadly. Kill off two Colossus before they even really started firing. And now still has one in support for this bio as they push. Yeah, I mean, it was really good for Stray to kind of reset the tank count. But like you said, that tank across is just helping continue the defense here. And, you know, with the charge being complete and going more into this kind of heavier Zealot army with plus two, um, he can't just charge on top of it. He has to go around a very long path. It's going to take a lot of pod shots off the tanks. And now two more tanks going to get back into position, just laying siege to that third base. But here comes a little bit of a run by for Estrella. We'll allow him to at least kind of pick up some of those uh, reinforcements as well. We kind of not make this so mm -hmm. potent. Yeah, but you can see why Terrans love this map. 
the you know these <laughs> these tank positions are just so deadly. They're so hard to dislodge. And behind it, yeah, and he's just macroing up, sitting on those five barracks, building as many units as he wants. And Estrella, he might just have to go up the space. I don't think there's any way that he holds it unless he pulls the trigger right now, which he might just decide to do. Beyond is split up, but the kiting is beautiful. The tanks are still shelling away. That's a Nexus killed. And the army is just larger for Beyond. The trades will eventually come through. A nice flank from Zealots able to clean up the tanks. And Estrella loses, I mean, a single Colossus, but cleans up that attack and that's what he needed. Unfortunately, it still loses the base, though. Yeah. Uh, I feel kind of like the uh, the overall supply here is a little bit of a, a mislead because you look at it, it's like, okay, well, Beyond is still a little bit ahead. We've got a third base for, or a fourth base, excuse me, for Australia. But a lot of that resource is actually in Medivac. So it's not a lot of attacking army. Yeah, he's going to have some heals mm -hmm. and stuff. But when it comes to these actual engagements, it feels like. Australia might just be a little bit more ahead, especially with that plus two done. He's got Archons coming through, getting more observers, and just trying to put himself in a, a good position. Now, Bion does have those sensor towers down, and this will allow him to see any kind of Zealot runbys coming up from that side. And as a Protoss, when you're doing these runbys, you want to try to get as sneaky as possible, and he's going to go ahead and go down towards that, that fourth base location to eventually just try to bypass that altogether. Absolutely is. It's going to be on rebuilding into this very, very large ball of Marine Marauder Medivac. He's going to be adding on Coast. He's going to be rebuilding that tank count as well, adding on the Vikings. So, well, the Colossus that Estrella are going for just are not going to be that useful. It's, you know, there's going to be six Vikings out, I believe, um, as soon as these two pop. And at that point, they kind of two shot the Colossus. It takes two volleys and they are just going to fall down. So, Beyond getting all the tools that he needs, um, I believe does have a fourth CC that is floating over. That is correct. And yeah. It's really down to Estrella right now. He's playing catch up. He's again, losing that third base is absolutely massive. You just don't have a lot of resources available to you. The Terran in the meanwhile is completely just being left alone. And that just means that Estrella and there's not a lot of options for him here. He has a very strong army. He has, you know, the Archons and two Colossus. But unfortunately, there are already ghosts out, and so this push just doesn't feel like it's going to get a lot of damage done. No, it really doesn't. I mean, he does have some disruptors on the way. He's going to try to add into this army, but like you said, with those ghosts, it just makes it a lot oh. tougher to deal with this. EMPs do go up onto the Archons and onto the good chunk of this army. The Vikings going to be able to take care of the Colossus, and now Stratus kind of has to back up. He, he's not as strong as he was, and... We're starting to see Beyond really start to explode in this uh, production here with plus three on the way for Stray. He's just now starting plus two, so he is behind in upgrades, but he's making up for it in just army supply. Yeah, unfortunately, the sell at run by, the sell at warp in, only gets five workers, but at this point, Beyond eh, doesn't really care about losing five workers. He just has a massive army, and that's good enough as. Estrella's trying to step up here, and you really can't. The disruptors just get focused down. The EMPs are good. The un he just knows how to micro these situations so, so well. And now this is a massive army pushing on in. Another army across the map. More EMPs go down. All the Archons are low on shields. Yeah, and those Archons. Nice tap out, Beyond. GG's. Uh, now, <laughs> Beyond is also a player that does like the proxy, and we have seen him you know, fairly often go into like a two or even three racks like proxy reaper or even just like straight up marine push um it doesn't look like he's going to be doing that just yet but as i say that we do see the sev making its way across the map and he's got one barracks being built in the main base and we'll see does he make a second one in a proxy location or is he just going to go across and scout with this yeah, I mean, Bian not usually one to send out this SCV scout, but it might just be curious to see if um, Estrella is being a bit cheeky or might just, yeah, actually is just going to go for the Nexus block. So this is something that I, I really like, especially when you already just, you, when you win that game one as dominatingly as you did, mm -hmm. just saying, you know what, I'm just going to go across. I'm going to try and get you off your game a little bit. Go for this engineering bay. Make it so that you have to pull probes to try and kill it so, you, so your timings aren't too messed up. It just gives Beyond a slight advantage, and it's really not going to cost him too much in the long run. Yeah, definitely. And that's one of the things, too, we see so often as these these pros have these builds like down to like the the middlest 
of uh, minerals and, and just timings all together. So whenever you come across able to disrupt that timing and really kind of force everything that they're trying to do off, sometimes we see that trickle down into the later stages of the game. It's not going to be like, oh my goodness, he blocked the, the Nexus, now he just automatically wins or something. But it definitely throws off any kind of timing that you may have had planned for that map. And behind this, Pion is actually going for something interesting here. It has a factory before the CC, so this does kind of lend it sort itself uh, to being a bit more aggressive, perhaps um, going into actually reactor Hellions, perhaps. We'll see. Um, but it's, it's also a bit safer, of course. You will have that factory available for those higher tech units a bit sooner, and then also have the option to go into um, a quicker Widow Mine drop should you choose but we'll see what beyond decides to go for it I, I think this might just be the exact same thing as he did last game um with that factory go into the uh i was gonna say go into the mine drop and it does look like that's gonna be but actually reacting out to mines so no hellions just mines but gonna be a lot more of them definitely well i would be kind of interested to see because there is a build we've seen maru do it where they get a couple of mines to open up they send those across with a medevac and then they build a few hellions like two maybe yeah like two hellions and they send the hellions into the natural at the same time as the main so it looks like that is going to be the case he's going to go into hellions behind this we should be seeing a medevac here once the starport finishes up but astraea going into blink he's got the stalkers on the way this is going to allow him to essentially blink up into the main and it, it almost worries me because beyond opening up into this Hellion and the Widowmine, he's not going to have a lot of tanks if a big push does come early on. Um, say if he gets a, a robotics facility and gets the, the Warp Prism, it just comes across with like four or five stalkers. It just makes it a little bit tougher for the Terran to defend. But Hellion's going to be making their way across the map, uh, getting a little bit of a scouting just to see is there any proxies, anything I need to worry about before he actually goes into the natural and again it's just kind of waiting for the medevac to finish up and trying to time this just right to where they enter around the same time so four medevac or excuse me four mines on the way I'm gonna be going across and uh, we should see uh, see what happens here yeah, this is gonna be a double pronged attack here from beyond with the Hellions, with the Widow Mines, and this could get a lot of damage if Estrella isn't ready, and Estrella hasn't been able to scout out too much. He did notice that, of course, there was a delayed CC. It wasn't up as quick, but here you go. It's just the Widow Mines straight on into the natural. I said that Maru-esque build where he just sends them straight on in, no hesitation, and then moves them up to the main and still has those Hellions waiting. And as everything is pulled up, here come the Hellions for the roast party. First shot is decent. That's going to be six workers in total going down. Still has a lot more damage that can be done, but a good warp in to stop it. And... Only eight probes, not as much as it could have been. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is some good damage, but overall, he's only lost four Widow Mines. But I agree, it could have been worse. It could have been, you know, a lot better for him. And now Estrella has a massive amount of stalkers he's going to start sending across the map. He's got an observer on the way. Blink is completed. And uh, eventually, we're just going to see him blink into the main base. But it looks like Bian going to go into the main now with those Hellions to do a little bit of a another Hellion roast here. Yeah, first shots are good. Pulls off, though, and decides just to target this line and gets a great lineup. That's going to be five immediately going down and now can head back even towards the ones that he targeted earlier. But here comes the blink up from Estrella. Had that blink available, but I, I think there's already an army here. Beyond with a bit of a misclick is unfortunate, but... Oh, he gets yeah, the, the Raven stalkers. as well. <sighs> the Raven, I mean... The thing is, though, Estrella loses a lot more workers, so behind this, he is yeah. now going to be down. And Beyond, at the same time, stops the Blink Stalker attack, knows that that's available, and has the stim and the plus one going on the way. So, you know, I think ends up being rather even mm -hmm. um, in the long run, I would say there. Yeah, I mean, he's able to, you know, get a tank, he gets the Raven. But like you said, you know, trading that out for, you know, six to, what, 13 links, 14, or excuse me, 14 probes um it, it does feel like it's kind of an even game still it's not like one player is over the other um we do see you know beyond has a little bit more of an army now and he's is adding on you know that plus one he's got that stem almost done and uh 
we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's still anyone's game. We've got more Colossus coming through now, going into the Forge, adding on those additional gateways. But the Stalkers really can't contest with the with the tanks right now. He needs some Zealots or something with this army to kind of tank those those shots. You're going to see the additional barracks being popped on down now, and this should be a timing attack coming out from beyond. Um, it should be kind of similar to what we saw on Beckett Industries with the three tanks, with the stim um, and the plus one, and eventually and moving out so that the combat shield does finish up as he gets across the map. And actually that, that medevac being able to dodge the vision of the observer is always nice. And you see Estrella finally being able to get back to the worker count that he would want to be at on three bases, getting that nice count of 60, adding on his extra gates. The real question is, though, how well can you hold this push when it does eventually come through? Yeah, I mean, he is getting the Colossus. He's got extended thermal ants. And, you know, the army here for Beyond is very marine heavy, which the, the Colossus do, like, extra damage against those. So maybe that will help. But again, with the tanks being in siege range and even just the Marauders helping with this, it definitely is a scary position to be in if you are Estrella. and have that magical count of three Colossus, which can, of course, just kind of one-shot those Marines. Doesn't really take a lot to clear them out, but this is a larger armor army for Beyond. Just has to be careful about not getting pounced on before he is sieged, and a few good initial uh, siege ups here means that the Protoss army can't really push down that ramp, and now you actually have four tanks all gathering together. This push from Beyond might actually be dangerous. This is a really good position. It's hard for Australia to push because of that choke. So kind of using the Sim City of the map that's usually advantageous for their Protoss against them. And that oh my, that is, that's an aggressive sin from Beyond. <laughs> yeah, uh, charge is about done here for Australia. And I feel like once that's, uh, excuse me, once the charge does finish up, he's going to be able to attack this a little bit easier. Of course, those zealots are going to be able to get on top of the Marines, hoping to do some uh, friendly damage against the Marines with the tank shots, and that will allow the Stalkers to blink up on top of the tanks. The Colossus in the back going to be able to get some damage done as oh. he focuses down two of the tanks, but there's just too much Marines losing a few of those Stalkers and will actually force Estrella back. And now Estrella's kind of in a corner as a third tank does join up and is trying to reset the count here. Yeah, I mean, that was actually great target fire from Beyond. Focuses the tanks onto the Colossus so oh, that it's gonna get the robotics facility. Yeah, it's gonna go down. All the Colossus production is down, and you're seeing that bang from Estrella as he's not able to produce as much as he would like. And again, beyond with the focus fire with the tanks, all that means is that the Colossus are just taken out of the fight. The Marines, while they stim back on top of the tanks, it means that suddenly they're not taking friendly fire damage. The Colossus aren't dealing that splash, and it's a whole lot better of a fight. And again, you're seeing beyond here just targeting down the Colossus with the tanks. And it means the upfront fight for his army, he's absolutely winning it. Estrella trying to reinforce, trying to do what he can, but it feels like Beyond just too strong, too good at this matchup. Everything falls down. GG, Beyond gonna tie us up 2-2.